Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to make a Ninja Turtle mask. I did Leonardo because of my buddy. I'm making it for him and he likes Leonardo. I want to do Raphael. That was my favorite Ninja Turtle for the most part as a kid growing up. But I did Leonardo because that's what he wanted. As you'll notice, the eyes on this are set like a Ninja Turtle's eyes. So you don't have very good vision. You would either have to bring the eyes in which would cause it to not look very much like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or put some holes or something, which I didn't want to do. So I just wanted it to look good. Uh, this is much better if you're just standing around at a convention posing. Not so great for trick-or-treating where you need to see where you're walking or something like that. Uh, but without me rambling anymore, let's go ahead and get right into Okay, for this build, you're going to need two of each pattern. The larger ones are separated into several pieces. You'll have to cut those out and tape them together to get the full length on those. And to get the opposite side, you just flip them over and trace them out. But for now, I'll set aside these, the number twos, the number threes, and the number sixes. And the first thing I'm gonna focus on is bonding together all of these V cuts. And to bond this together, I'm going to be using contact cement. Uh, you can use DAP or Barge or whatever. But I, uh, those are the two brands that specifically I would recommend using with foam if you're new to this. And how it works is you apply some to each surface to be bonded. Allow the piece to sit for 15 to 20 minutes. If you live in a very humid area, 20 minutes is good. And then join it together. And I'm going to work on all of these V-cuts all along these patterns. Alright, I've applied my contacts and met and they've had 15 minutes to set, so I'm going to go ahead and put them together. Now that these are glued together with all the V-cuts, I need to heat and shape these before gluing them together. Basically on the number four pieces, I'm going to heat along the bottom. And you can see the V-cuts already pulled it there, but I want it more rounded. And same thing up here, because this is essentially going to be the bottom lip, so I want to heat and round this, and then round this off. On the number one, I need to curve this off, and help round out the brow areas a bit more as well. Right next, you're going to want to attach the 6 to the 5 and the number 3 piece to the number 2.
next, I'm going to go ahead and attach the number 1 to the confined 2, 3, 5, and 6. And when attaching these, I started with this corner here, because this, in my opinion, was the trickiest part to get in, since it's so tight. And then it was much easier just to work it around. No surprise that lastly, the number four is going to be glued in. But I can't stress enough to have this as rounded as possible. And this as well, as well as like the lip area on your number one. Because once you glue these together, it's going to be really hard to fully heat form them if you haven't heat formed them before you put it together. Okay, everything is now glued together, but it's still pretty blobby, so I'm going to need to heat and push these in a bit and push in the temples on the side and, of course, round this out. And to round this out, I'm going to use a canvas hat maker's mannequin head. You know that I'm happy with the shape that I've heated into it and I feel like 
everything is as good as I'm going to be able to get it. I'm going to use my Dremel rotary tool to sand this up. Uh, just the seams though for the most part. All right, now it's sanded and all that fun stuff. I need to cover the seams. Not really worried too much about the seams in here since the turtles have a mask that's going to cover that. So I didn't really sand them much. I did round it out here and stuff like that. But other than that, I didn't sand these, didn't even bother. I did sand all these, of course, and I want them to look smooth, as smooth as possible anyways. And for that, I used DAP. Alex Plus. It's an all-purpose acrylic latex caulk plus silicone. This is clear. There's a fast dry that is white. You can sand that, but I prefer this stuff. It's a little trickier to tell if it's smooth because when it's dry, it does dry clear. But whenever you apply it, it's white. And that's one of the things I like about it is that I can see it as I'm applying it to my project. See how much I have, if it's enough or too much or just whatever. And... Until you really get the hang of this, my only advice is that less is more, if that makes sense. Uh, applying this stuff too thickly uh, will cause you to have an unsightly lump, which is, in my opinion, just as bad as having a seam. Although, if you sand your seams well enough and you put enough coats of Plastidip, you probably won't even see these. But I don't leave that up to chance. So once I spread out my Alex Plus here, I then have to smooth it out. And to smooth it out, I have to use some regular old tap water. Since this is an acrylic latex silicone, you're just fine with putting water on it. You can't do that with most regular latex or silicone. So that's one of the awesome things about this product is its general ease of use. And as I'm doing it, I really try to just massage it down into the gap created by the seam, and then smooth and even it out as much from there. If you haven't done this before, and you're watching this and you're thinking about trying it, my suggestion is before you try it for the first time on a finished project, start with a couple scrap pieces of foam that you glue together to create a seam, and then once you do that, 
you can practice on that scrap foam before you move on to trying to do it on a finished project. Okay, once you've got your silicone applied, I use some tap water in a container to just get my finger wet and wash all the excess silicone off and then I can spread it out. If you don't feel comfortable touching it, you can always wear gloves, but you have to make sure, or at least I have to make sure, that the finger of the glove is pulled very tight to my actual finger, otherwise the glove will get creases and wrinkles and will totally mess up all the Once silicone work, it, which I'm going to do with this, it makes it all one uniform color. And the nice thing about this stuff is you can use it afterwards. So if I don't feel like I felt filled the seams enough after plastic dipping, I'll go back through and do a little more filling until I'm happy with it and just re plastic dip it and then paint it. Okay, that's just one coat. I'm going to layer this up until it's consistent and you don't notice the seams and all that. Uh, I tried not to put too much on the eyes, mostly just because it's a little easier to glue and contact cement things, in particular fabric, uh, to foam a little bit more securely if it's not just gunked up with plastic dip they can see. Okay, all the plastic dipping is done and I didn't do a solid layer either for the first coat or any of the coats really. I just kind of randomly sprayed it on so that it would get a texture instead of a smoother surface since you know it's a ninja turtle and now i'm going to start airbrushing on some green yellow orange and maybe some brown and i don't know what else
Okay, I've finished painting it. I started with yellow, and all the spraying I was doing was from about two to three feet away generally. Uh, at that range, I noticed if any thicker drops happen to come out, they generally fall off, which gives you the end result is just that fine mist. Kind of wastes some paint, but it works. And after the yellow, I did a thin layer of orange, and then green, and a little bit of brown around the eyes, and then some highlighting with the yellow in through here and here, just to kind of make those areas pop and to give a little more depth to the mouth itself. Now I need to find some fabric and glue a mask onto here. Okay, next is going to be the mask, since this is more of a definitely not dark and uber-threatening, menacing Ninja Turtle. Uh, I know a lot of the stuff I do usually has that kind of edge to it. This doesn't. So I'm using a, a lighter blue fabric. And this pattern is folded in half, essentially. Like this piece is folded in half, and the pattern is just from this piece here down to here. And you can extend it as you need. Uh, this, the little lines you see in pen are actually little cut marks. Because what I'm going to do is use spray adhesive on this and some contact cement on here. The contact cement's going to act as like my generic guidelines for where I want the mask to go. So I don't end up gluing it all off. It's a way for me to help line it up. But also to make sure it sticks. The spray adhesive is pretty good, especially the medium or the high tack, but it just works better if you put, in my opinion and from my experience, if you put a layer of it sprayed on the cloth and then contact cement on the object and join the two together like that. over so that I have something to grab onto. To get a little bit of low lighting, I did a little bit of airbrushing around the eyes with some black that was thinned out so much it was almost translucent, and a little bit in the center of the two eyes there as well. And if you're looking for more of a puffy mask effect, uh, you could always just use padded foam and make a pattern out of that layer your foam over it, and then put the mask over it. Although I think you'd have to thin it down pretty much or have it removed and thin down to meet the eyes. You could glue the mask pattern in, but I think it would work just fine. However, putting a layer of foam like that may raise it up in certain places that will cause the pattern not to fit. So you may have to alter the actual cloth pattern to fit over that foam. Okay, and the last thing is I'm going to glue in some white sheer fabric uh, for the eyes. If you wanted, you could put glass eyes into it. I don't think that would be a problem. Uh, however, you wouldn't be able to see. You could put no eyes in it, but that's going to look ridiculous. Because as I pointed out in the opening of the video, most people's eyes are not spaced that far apart. It's a feature to the Ninja Turtle and various representations throughout the years I wanted to capture in this. 
But in doing so, you don't have good vision. You basically have no central vision unless you have your head cocked to the side and you're kind of looking out of one eye. So with that being stated, if you're just going to pose and you're not doing anything active like trick-or-treating or walking around, getting some nice high-quality glass eyes to put in there would be great if you're just standing, posing at a convention, and periodically removing your mask if you need to move or do anything. But any sort of active movement, I would just go with some sheer fabric. Okay, the contact cemented in two layers of fabric in the eyes so that you can still see out of it, but it's a bit harder to see in. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Might as well go ahead and throw this on and see how I look. Okay, so that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this and it gave you some ideas for your own projects. I kind of mashed up uh, elements of different things over the years, uh, like influences from the Nickelodeon series, the original cartoon, a uh, couple things from the original comic and action figures, and the original movie as well, just kind of like little bits of each to make this pattern so it's kind of a generic pattern as far as that goes but i haven't seen much else out there except for insanely expensive replicas that look like this but i think you could take this do a build and then sculpt on top of that pretty easily or expand areas or minimize areas or whatever to get it look uh like whatever you need to suit your needs so the link for that is down below in the description to the Facebook page. All the patterns are free. You just go there, download them, print them out on an 8.5 by 11. Uh, this will fit a 23 inch head pretty easily, but I wouldn't go any higher than that. If you do, you're going to have to scale it up. Like, say, print it 5% bigger if you want a 24 or 7.5 for like a 25 or whatever. Or scale it down as well if you want it smaller. But yeah, uh, hopefully this gave you some ideas for your projects and that you enjoyed the video. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.